Are you an aspiring money market dealer? Or are you looking at liquidity risk management for a bank? Are you curious about different RBI rates? If yes, then take a detailed look at this video on repo trades. Repo trading is a very buoyant part of money market activity. It simply stands for repurchase order. And how it's been broken up is REP, that's the rep comes from REP, and the O comes from order. So they've merged repurchase order and they've called it as a repo. Repo trades involve two tranches. As the name suggests, it involves selling an instrument and buying back that instrument. In this case, it's selling a treasury bond or a government security and buying back the same security at a locked in price. This is akin and is quite similar to borrowing and repayment of a principal amount of the loan. Repo trades are money market trades. In fact, a majority of the trades in the money markets are repo in nature. These repo trades involve two legs. One leg involves selling the security and the second leg for which the price is locked in is buying back the security by the seller. So the two tranches of the security trade of the repo trade involves selling the security and buying it back. Repo trades could be for duration such as trade day plus one, trade day plus two. Sometimes it could be trade day plus three, trade day plus four, etc. These are, these are symbolized as T plus 1, T plus 2, T plus 3 and so on. Generally, these are very short term trades. Therefore, these are, take place in the money markets. In short, repo trades is nothing but a collateralized borrowing. Borrowing which has a collateral attached to it. Let's now analyze what the situation of Hari Bank. Hari Bank needs, let's say, about $50 million. This could be for multiple purposes because, as you know, in a bank, liquidity challenges are multiple in terms of reporting requirements, in terms of managing depositors, withdrawals, in terms of disbursements, etc. So let's say Hari Bank needs about $50 million and this is needed for a period of just four days. So this could be a reason of just asset liability mismanagement, a mismatch that could have taken place in the balance sheet and therefore to even out that mismatch, Hari Bank might want this kind of money for such a short duration of time. This could be for liquidity management and managing the expectations of depositors of the bank. These are short to ultra short term requirements. On the other hand, somewhere in the same universe is a bank called KH Bank and KH Bank is having excess funds of about $60 million. And KH Bank does not see any immediate use of these funds, so it's looking to explore what are the opportunities to invest this kind of money for let's say 5 days. Idle cash for KH Bank is a cost like it is for all banks. This means they have not put their funds to use and therefore it's a loss of income for the bank. Therefore, KH Bank is looking to invest this money in short term money markets. So here you have Hari Bank and we have KH Bank. One has the capital, one needs the capital. Let's see how they meet. They meet in the money markets through primary market dealers to do an OTC trade on the repo market. Let's analyze what happens on trade day T. On trade day T, KH Bank lends $50 million to Hari Bank. Okay, it's as simple as that. KH Bank, the, the dealer comes and tells KH Bank, look, we've got a counterparty for you, Hari Bank, and they need this kind of money. Would you be interested in lending money to Hari Bank? Is there a risk in this kind of a trade? Yes, of course there is a risk for KH Bank because KH Bank over here is the lender and the risk 
is that what if Hari Bank does not pay? If Hari Bank does not pay, then KH Bank has to incur that loss and start writing off the assets. This risk is called as credit risk in banking. How do, we, how do banks normally mitigate this risk? Banks normally mitigate this risk by asking collateral from the borrower. So KH Bank is now going to tell Hari Bank that look, I'm interested in doing this trade provided you give me collateral for the same. So on trade date T, continuing with the same trade date, Hari Bank gives collateral to KH Bank. Okay. So over here, let us summarize what happens on trade day T. On trade day T, KH Bank gives $50 million as a loan to Hari Bank. Hari Bank, in acknowledgement of that loan and in need of that loan, has to provide collateral to KH Bank. Okay. This way, KH Bank has given a loan on the basis of the collateral provided by Hari Bank. Hence, repo trades are called as collateralized short-term borrowings. On trade day T, KH Bank gives $50 million to Hari Bank. In exchange, Hari Bank gives collateral of $15 million. For Hari Bank, this is a repo trade. And for KH Bank, this is a reverse repo trade. It's just a mirror image of a repo trade. So many participants get confused. What's the difference between a repo trade and a reverse repo trade? So thus, re thus reverse repo and repo trades are just from whose perspective you're seeing, right? I mean, you're seeing a repo trade from the borrower's perspective and you're seeing a reverse repo from the lender's perspective. So all this happens on trade day T. On the trade day T plus 4, for which the collateral has been provided, Hari Bank, which has the collateral, uh, just taken the money from KH Bank, must repay the principal and the interest for the four days. Okay. In another video, I'll be uploading how this interest is calculated linked to so far. And KH Bank, which has lent the money on the basis of the collateral, will return the collateral back to Hari Bank. Okay, so this is as simple or as complicated as this. So on the trade date, collateral is returned, principal plus coupon is returned by the borrower to the lender. Thus, repo trades are collateralized borrowings which take place in the money markets and they are for a very short term duration. Often a question is asked by participants who get confused. What is a repo trade? What is the reverse repo trade? Absolutely nothing. It's only from whose perspective you're seeing. If you're seeing it from the perspective of the lender, it's a reverse repo trade. If you're seeing it from the perspective of the borrower, it's a repo trade. Thank you so much for listening into this video. If you're interested in a career in fund accounting, corporate actions, trade lifecycle, OTC derivatives, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and please participate in those quizzes that I post regularly on my community page of YouTube channel. Thank you so much.